What's up guys, this is FJ and today I'll be waxing my snowboards because it's the end of the season. I just wanted to give you guys a quick tutorial on how to do that. So I've got my snowboard here. I'm actually going to do all my snowboards, but I'll show this one to you guys. You can see my setup here. I have two stools. I'm going to be removing my bindings first. So what I like to do first is make sure the board is clean before I apply new wax. This is a horsehair brush that I use for like shoes or brushing anything really. And I just want to get rid of the dirt from the top sheet. And of course, the base. Brush off any kind of dirt or maybe small stones that may be stuck in your base in your wax. I didn't really take my boards out too often this season. I usually like to ride them five days max. So five days on the hill. And after the fifth day, I would give it a new coat of wax. So I have three snowboards, so I kind of broke it up. Then what I like to do is take a paper towel, like the Simple Green. And this is a surface ready to use cleaner, non-toxic, clean rinsing. It's good for your base. I'll spray it directly on the base. Just wipe it down. I also use the same cleaner for the top sheet as well. I'll be storing these snowboards for the summer, so I might as well do that now too. That's as clean as it can get. Other people might use a hard bristle brush, maybe like a metal bristle brush. I don't have one of those. And I guess for my style of riding, I'm more of a leisure rider. I don't take it as seriously in terms of maintenance for the snowboard. So I'm just gonna put my wax directly on this surface now. I do see there's like, you know, some darker marks and some dirt marks from the boxes and uh, some of the features that were from the park, but I'm not really bothered by that. I'm just gonna leave it on there and put the protective wax over. So what I have here, I have a bar of Hertel wax that I purchased online. Uh, you could use any kind of wax. I have other wax here in my kit. You know, I think this is Toko wax. There's different temperatures of wax that you can use. I just generally purchase the cheapest that I can find. I'm sure there's like really cold wax and there's warmer wax for wet days. But again, I'm more of a leisure rider. I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference which wax I use. So really it's just the protection of my base, make sure that it's slick and I don't get stuck. And longevity over the summer, especially for storage, it's really good to protect your base so it doesn't dry out. Whatever's on sale, that's cool with me. I have here a Dekine iron. It comes with the Dekine base waxing kit. A lot of people like to make sure their edges are super sharp and they try to maintain their edges. But for the most part, you only want to use your edge file if you have really heavy, deep burrs on your edges. So let's say you go over a rock or any kind of hard surface that may have caused deformities in your edge. That's when you want to use your file. Every time you scrape, you're removing a little bit more of your edge and then eventually you might not have much edge left. So I really want to have these snowboards for a long time. Edges to me are still pretty sharp. You can sort of test with your fingers. Generally, I don't want them too sharp either because I don't want to catch edges if I'm going on features like boxes or things like that. All right, guys, so I have my iron here. I'm going to turn it on. In general purpose, you want to just have it over 100. It's in degrees Celsius, so 100 to 120 is the working temperature that you want to work with. Over that is just overkill. Uh, it's just going to melt the wax faster and you might even burn off some of the wax. You don't want to do that. just want to have it hot enough so that the, the wax is going to melt on your surface. You want to be careful not to burn yourself on the iron. That feels hot for sure. You don't want to hold it too long because then you burn your finger. But I think we're ready to go. So what you want to do, you're going to push your wax onto the iron so that it starts to drip down off a corner. As the wax drips down, it's gonna fall off that point. So, see it's coming off really quick. I'm gonna just generally have this drip down all across my board. It's actually pretty fast. Okay. You kind of want to make sure that the drips are evenly distributed so it's easier for you later. You want to make sure the surface is cool before you put it back in the bag. I'm going to leave that here for now. I don't know if you can see this guys, hopefully you can. 
and try to see with the reflection, but I have a, a pretty generous drip pattern on my base. If you guys can see that. Not too thick either, because again, I don't want to waste wax. Any kind of uh, wax that's also melted on the bottom here, it collects. You can even scrape that off and use that as well. So I'm going to take this hot surface, flat, still the same. I have it at still between 110 and 120. And I'm just going to... You don't want to push too hard. You just want to have it so that it can start glazing over the board. And its own weight is really all you need to spread this wax. So you don't want to go over too fast, you're not going to melt anything. So you want to do it pretty slowly so that you can see that the wax that you've dripped starts to melt and spread. Circle motions are good for trying to spread the, the wax. You want to cover all the whole surface, all the way to the edges. So you're going to bring your iron over the edges as well. If you find that it starts to feel kind of scrapey, then likely you've run out of the wax and you're just going on your original base again. So go back to one of the spots that have heavy drips of wax and you want to melt that again and then guide that melted wax over to the edges. I did a pretty good job here actually of the dripping. Any more than I think it would have been excessive, any less than I would have probably had to add more. So that was pretty good. You also want to avoid having the iron on uh, one particular part of your board for too long. It's not really good for your base to overheat it and have it in that high temperature for too long. So just enough so that you can spread the drippings of wax. I'm pushing a little bit. That's probably because I'm a little impatient. So again, you don't have to, but it does melt the wax a little bit quicker if you push down a little bit on your fingers. Coverage looks good. As you glaze over the board, the reason why I'm using the word glaze is you can see the wax liquefy like a honey glaze over a donut. You can see that the wax, as it cools, it starts to create a glazed look as opposed to drips. So I'm just gonna continue this until I finish the board. The drips are all evenly spread. Now, I'll bring it closer to you. You can see it with the uh, light reflection on the surface. It's pretty much glazed over the entire surface. Right there. Now, on a regular day, you're not finished. You gotta actually prep this for you to ride. Some people, again, who aren't as picky with their snowboards, they'll just take this out and start riding with it because as you ride on the snow or any kind of features, the excess wax is going to just eventually rub off. It's gonna chip off, rub off. It takes some time, but it won't be a very super fast surface and it won't be a very even surface. But if you're riding in the park all the time, going all over features, you're not really gonna notice that. So that's one thing people might do. Generally, I'll do a quick scrape. You take an edge of this, and you just wanna push in a 45 degree angle. You can scrape pulling towards you or you can scrape pushing away from you and that will get rid of any of the excess wax that you've melted over your base. You don't wanna to push too hard whereas you're digging into the base, just enough so that you can create a flat, smooth surface without exposing the base material. For today, I'm going to actually be putting this away as storage. And uh, for the summer, it's good to just leave your wax on the board so it protects your base from drying out even more. You also wanna wait for the wax to cool, but otherwise you might be digging in too deep. So as you scrape, you basically wanna con continue this motion throughout the board so that you can get rid of any kind of mounds of wax. Like you, you could see that there's textures of wax here that are excessive and you wanna smoothen it out. It's gonna get a little messy. So some people might wanna do this in a garage, outside, or in a covered area. If I was doing it indoors, especially in a carpeted area, I'd be vacuuming after. If you're gonna go take it the further step, then you take the scouring pad. So this is more of a medium soft scouring pad. This is really just to buff off your wax. So what you would do with this is you would do circles over the entire surface of the snowboard. Again, smooth it out even more. Not too hard, but just enough where you can start to see that it actually makes an impact on the wax. And you go across the entire snowboard to smoothen it out. 
you'll actually notice that it ends up having a smoother and shinier surface. And then once you've completed that, you're finished. Uh, you can take your soft brush again at that point, just brush off all the excess wax that you may have, and you're good to go. At that point, it's also not a bad idea if you wanted to tune your edges, you do that at the end, uh, just because you're going to have some remnants of wax on your edges as well. So you could smoothen out or sharpen your edges at that point. So there you have it guys. I'm gonna do my other snowboards here too. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. And as usual, you can see all my channels up there on the top and you can see all my social media there on the bottom. Thanks guys for watching. Have a great day. Take care.